Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this spring in Blender. And before we begin, I want to start by saying that I don't know how to animate it. So like, I guess you could scale it along Z, but then it gets smushed like that. So I don't know how well that's going to work. But anyways, all to say is I don't know how to animate it quite yet. And you're also going to need to know some basic navigation, how to move around here how to go in and out of edit mode, how to zoom in and out, you know, just the basic navigation, selecting objects. But yeah, that's basically it. Let's jump right into it. All right, so here I am in the Blender startup file. What I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna select everything by pressing A and then just delete everything. Now I'm gonna start by adding a torse. We go to mesh, torse, and let's see. So I'm going to set the resolution, I'm going to set major segments to 12, just because that sounds like a good number. It needs to be low because it gets a little bit tedious the higher it is, but we can always fix that later. And then I'm going to set the minor segments to 8 just because it just looks kind of nice that way. All right, then I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to go into edge selection mode. And I'm going to deselect all these. I'm going to select an edge loop. It's, uh, yeah, this one needs to be like on one of the axes, if that makes sense. Like this is on the x-axis or, or it needs to be on the y-axis, but it needs to be on one of the axes. I guess it doesn't really matter a whole lot, but it would, it's nice to have it on there. All right, so we're going to select the edge loop and then we're going to split it. So basically we're going to press control E to bring up the edges menu and then we're going to, where is it? There it is, edge split. So basically what this did, so I'm going to select this edge loop, and you can select an edge loop by holding Alt and then select it. And then, so I just selected that one, so now it's two edge loops. But they're like right on top of each other. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna select one of these edge loops, and then I'm just gonna select all of these edge loops around here. Oops. There we go. So I have all of these edge loops selected except for one. So if I move all of these, they should move all except for that one. So now I'm going to press 5 on my numpad to go into orthographic view. And then I'm going to push 3 to go into my right side because that's where... So this should be the front right there. Oh, I don't like that cursor to go away from the center. But yeah, so there it is. It's on the front. And now I'm going to... Either you can hold control or you can press this button, this little magnet button for snapping. And the grid lines right here should be at, I think they're 0.1 intervals. So we're just going to move everything up one. And then you're going to hit uh, Alt. You're going to hold Alt and Shift and then click there. So right click there so you deselect one. And then go up one more. Deselect that. Go up again. Oops, I moved my cursor. Go up again. Deselect. Up again. And you're basically just going to do this. And you want to make sure they snap to the grid lines. You know, that's why we push this button, because it would look weird if it wasn't precise. And I, I just prefer my things precise anyway. But so here we go. So that is the first segment of the spring. So now what we're going to do is select it and duplicate it by hitting Shift D. And then we're going to, oh, what? Oh, okay. That's, that was weird looking, but I still have this uh, snapping on. I sometimes don't like that on. But, uh, all right, so we're going to, or not add, duplicate. And then we're going to push Z so that we duplicate only up. And I'm going to hold Control, actually, so it goes up there. And then I'm going to open this out. So I moved it up 1. That's what this means right here. Now I'm going to move it up 1.2 instead so that it goes right there. And how you know that is because we had 12 segments. Remember when we set the resolution of the torus, we had cell, uh, uh, excuse me, we had 12 segments, and we moved each segment up 0.1. So ultimately, we moved them all up 12 of these units. So that'd be 1.2 Blender units. So there is two segments of it, and you can duplicate these 1.2. You can duplicate that as many times as you want. I'm going to just have two for the purposes of this video, but you can duplicate that as many times as you want.
we still need to join these. So let's select both of them, press Control J. So they're one object now. And now we have a scene here, which isn't the greatest. So we have that, and that can cause problems later. So we're going to go back to this orthographic view, and we're going to grab one of them, move them over while holding Control, because uh, we want to make sure these go the exact same distance from each other. So this should be 0.2 away. So now we're going to select both of them. We're going to hit S for scale, Y, because that's the axis. And if, you, uh, if it's on a different axis, press a different one. And then 0 for how. So now they're right on each other. And then we're going to push Control V and then remove doubles. So basically what that did, you see up here it says removed eight vertices. It's just one edge loop now. So that got rid of the seam there. So now it is basically done. You're basically ultimately done with your uh, with your spring. If you want, you can make it look nicer. So here's how to make it look nicer. If you want, uh, so first of all, it looks like we have these big gaping holes here. That doesn't look very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select. Oops, I'm going to select that. I'm going to snap my cursor to it by pushing Shift S. It pulls up the snap menu. And then, so it basically snaps it to the center of that uh, edge ring. So then I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to add, oh, excuse me, I'm going to add a UV sphere. And then I'm going to open this out. And I'm going to set the segments to, uh, or actually, I'm going to set the size to 0.25. So now it's about the same size as that. And you'll know that. Uh, Actually, let me get rid of this real quick. When you add a torus, it's the uh, you want to, it's this uh, it's this minor radius. Basically, the major radius is how big it is from the center there, and then the minor radius is is how big the circle of it is, if that makes sense. But the minor radius 0.25 is what we want for the scale of our sphere. So. Let's see, size 0.25, yeah, and that is the that's the perfect size for it. And then segments. Let's see, how many segments do we want? I'm gonna put this to six, and then four. And I'll tell you why four. Here's why four rings. Six is just so it looks kind of nicer. Uh, you can set that as many as you want, but four will matter because here's how you tell from this top vertex here. Count. On this torus, count, there's one face there, one face there, so that's two faces, three, and then four, and then you're at that bottom vertex. So, all right, sorry about that. Uh, my program, Bandicam, can only record for 10 minutes, so it cut out there. Um, but yeah, so that's why four rings. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this orthographic view. I'm going to push Z so I get wireframe, then I'm going to press Tab to enter edit mode. I'm going to go to face selection mode, and I'm going to press B to draw a box select around that half, and then I'm going to delete those faces. So what that did, I'm going to push Z again. So now I have this little cap there. And now I'm going to duplicate this along Z. Let's see, I'm going to say negative 2.4, because that's how far every time I, I duplicated that up, that would be 1.2 from there to there, and then 1.2 from there to there. So that would be 2.4 for the whole thing. And then I'm going to rotate this along Z 180 degrees because, you know, it needs to face the other direction. And then depending on how long your spring is, you're going to have to, uh, whenever you duplicate it, you're going to have to move it further. But you want that exact amount. And then what we're going to do, we're going to select all of these, hit Control J to join. Now they're all one object. And then we're going to get rid of those seams like we had in the, in the uh, for right there so we're gonna get rid of seams basically so we're going to select this hold control move it over hold control move it over and I'm gonna do the same thing over here real quick do that now I'm gonna hold alt shift and select all of these oops all of these edge loops now I'm gonna scale Y 0 and then I'm going to control V remove doubles yay so now there are no seams in the whole thing alright so next what we can do 
is it looks a little bit weird. You see all these polygons. So now what we can do is go over to the modifiers tab here. We can add a modifier, the multi-resolution modifier. We hit subdivide twice, and then we can also hit smooth shading over here, and it looks nice and smooth. Um, let's see, what else can we do? There is, and then you can hit apply to, like right now, here's edit mode. It's, it's still all those vertices, so it, it's not actually there, so you hit apply to make it all of those vertices, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna apply it quite yet. Another one you can do is the uh, subdivision surface, which works very similarly. We go to two, and then it's basically exactly the same thing, except when you go into edit mode, you can see. Let me go back to flat. You can see all those things, but the like it has the what it actually is around it, if that makes sense. I don't know if that completely makes sense, but yeah, you can do that modifier as well. So there you go. That is it. You have made a spring. And obviously if you wanted it longer, you could have made it, you could have duplicated more segments like that. And if there's any less tedious way to do it, please let me know in the comments. I know that, that uh, shifting all those things up one at a time was a little bit tedious, but... If there's a way to do it better, let me know in the comments. And But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.